Um, so we're going to talk about systems of equations. And like I said, this is either going to be two lessons or maybe three. It just depends on how fast we can work through it. Okay? Um, so that may ring a bell. Um, I'll give you guys a second to ponder that. Um, can you guys find an x and a value for x and y that works for both equations? It has to work for both simultaneously. When you think you got it, throw a hand up in the air. Yeah, well, what's up? Okay, what'd you get? Five and four is right. And and the the one and it matters which one is which. So you can't just say five and four. We get to know which one is which. X is four. I mean X is five. Yes, X would be five. And four is six. Y. Y is four. That that's the one that works for both. Well, this is what's called a systems of equations. Okay, systems of equations is when you have two equations with two variables. Now you could go higher. You could have three equations with three variables, or four with four. Um, we're not doing that. We're going to stick with two. Um, but a system equation, when you have two equations with two variables, and you're looking for the pair of numbers that works for both equations, that's what it means to solve it. It has to work for both. Now, there's an infinite number of answers for each one of these equations, but there's only one pair that works for both. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can get nine, right? So if I was just looking at this, it would be five plus four. But nine. it could be 3 plus 9. I'm nine. sorry, 3 plus 6. One, eight plus one. 1 plus 8. There's a lot of things that make x, you can subtract and get 1, like 10 minus 9 or 11 minus 10. But there's only one pair that works for both, and that's what we call a solution to a system of equations. Thank you. Yes, I will. Thanks for reminding me. stuff in here first. I know. Gonna they don't vacuum. Uh, they try. They're short staffed this year, so he gets there when he can. All right, so that's what a system of equations is, and that's what a solution is. So there's some blanks for you guys to fill in on your notes. I'll read it while you guys are writing. Um, but a system of equations is a set of two equations with two variables. And what does it mean to solve them? It means that we want to find the value of x and y that simultaneously works for both equations. All right, shall we proceed? Okay, now we solved the system of equations earlier this morning. We, we found the answer was 5 and 4, right? And that was just by guessing and checking with our brain. Well, a lot of times it's not going to be that, that quick or easy. We're, we're going to have to have some strategies to find those numbers. Um, so there are three strategies we're going to look at in this class to solve systems of equations, and here they are. One way to solve a system is by graphing. Another way is by using something called the substitution method. Another is the elimination method. Um, and I, I think this, does this sound familiar to you guys? You should have seen that last year in Algebra 1, so we're just reviewing, but it's not like I would expect you guys to remember that at this point. It's, it's, a, it's pretty tough. I actually review it with all my classes. Even my calculus kids need to review it this so. And that's why we're going to review it. All right, so you got some blanks to fill in there. So how to solve by graphing. That's where we're going to start. We're going to start with the strategy of solving by graphing. So when you graph a line, you guys, what a line is, is really it's just a collection of an infinite number of points. That's all it is. And each one of those points are points that work for that equation. So, for instance, let me, let, let's take this one here. Um, let's say I plug in one for x. 
I'm going to do that real quick. You guys don't need to write this, okay? I just want to show you something, but you don't need to write it. If I plug in 1, I get negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. So when x is 1, y is negative 1. That's a point on the graph, okay? Or I could plug in another point. If I were to plug in negative 1 for x, I would get 5, and that would be this point up here. There's an infinite number of points on this graph, and each one of those points are something that work for this equation. Okay? And this equation also has an infinite number of points that work for it. The question is, what point do they both have? Which point works for both? Well, it's the place where they cross. That's the only point that they both have in common, and therefore that's the point that would work for both equations. So the way that you solve a system of equations by graphing is by graphing them and finding where they cross. Okay? It is possible for two lines to not cross if they're parallel. And if that's the case, then we would say there's no solution. Okay? So let's go ahead and do example one here. So find example one on your paper and let's get started. Um, so let's graph these. We're, we're going to review graphing. Um, all right, so question number one, I'll wait three seconds and then I'll call on somebody. So I'll ask a question, wait three seconds and I'll call on somebody. Um, I want to graph this one first. So I need to start with the y-intercept. So my first question is, what is the y-intercept? What do you think, Michael? What's the y-intercept? Two is correct. So let's put a dot on the y-axis at two. This is review. We did this, I think, last week or something like that. Um, next question. I'll wait three seconds, then I'll call on you. For the same equation there, what's the slope? What do you think, Krista? The question was, what is the slope? <laughs> it is 1 over 1. Um, so, one over, so, first of all, when the slope's not there, it's a 1. And if you want to think of that as a fraction, it would be 1 over 1. So I'm going to come back to Crystal, though. I'm going to say, Crystal, this number tells me how, how much to do what? Correct. And this number tells me how far to go right. So I'm going to, starting from this dot, I'm going to go up 1, right 1. And there we go. Now I can connect my dots here, and that would be fine. But when you're solving a system of equations by graphing, you want your line to be as straight as possible, because if it's not, you're, you're probably going to get your answer wrong. So here's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to use that slope again, and I'm going to find another point. My slope is up 1 over 1, right? So let's do it again. Up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. And so on. Just keep doing that. And we can even go backwards. Get as many points on there as you can. The more points you have, the straighter your line will be. And the straighter your line is, the better you'll be able to see right where those two lines cross. So I would, I would encourage you to use that slope a bunch of times to find out where they're crossing. Okay. So, huh? Say that again? That's the main thing we're doing, yeah. So, so far, this is just review. We've done this before. What? What's your mom worried about? You're right. You're right. But, I I don't know. If, if I can give you a test, that this test, after class and you pass it, I'll let you take the rest of the few days off. I'll do it. Yeah. I'm yeah. doing it. Well, because if we're going to spend a few days on this stuff. So if you already know this, then you're done. But if you don't, then, so yeah, if you want to test out in the next few days, hang out with me at lunch. We'll do it, and then you can take the rest of the few days off. I promise you. I won't make you do it again. If you what if know. we have break lunch? That's cool. Absolutely. And I'll give break you 100% lunch? on everything. Huh? Break lunch? I have second lunch, but you can come in at first. Oh, that's it. Um, just let me know when you're coming so I can have that test ready for you, okay? I'll come to the That's fine. All right, so let's go ahead and do the next one here. Um, y equals negative 1 half x plus 5. Um, 
Now, just, just so you I'll pause this real quick. Um, let's graph this one here. Um, let's do it again. Natalie, what's my what's my y? I'm sorry, I didn't give you three seconds. But what what's my y intercept? Good. And then three. I'll, I'll wait three seconds this time. But the question is, what is the um, the slope for this one? Jeremiah, what do you think? What's the slope of the blue line? Not sure? Okay. Um, let's try... Adriana, what's the slope of the blue line? Good. Now, since it's negative... Adrian, what am I? What, which way do I go? Uh huh. Or we're still going to go to the right. Okay, but the negative makes us go down. Instead. So starting from here, I'm going to go down one, right two, and I put a dot. Now, do you see they're already crossing? Now I could keep finding more points, but at this point it doesn't really matter because I already found where they cross, so I don't care. But you could keep doing the slope and find more points if you want to. But all I care about is now I can definitely see where they're crossing. Okay, so now remember we're solving a system of equations. The solution to a system is when you're graphing where they're crossing. And so my answer to this question is going to be what? So think about it. I'll give you a few seconds to think about what the answer is and then I'll call on you to share out your answer. Who said that? Two fours, right? All right, so two, four. Good. All right. So that's how you can find the solution to a system of equations. Can you imagine trying to just guess what the x and y are on here? That'd be kind of hard. But graphing it gives you a nice way to find right what the answer is. Okay. So that is how you do a system by graphing. So here's one for you guys. Let's see what you got. I agree. So let, let's let's see. Now, maybe you didn't get that. Maybe you got something close. But did you get a point somewhere over here? Then you probably, you, you did it okay. Now, to get the exact answer, you'd have to put a whole bunch of dots like I did. Okay, if you only did two and then sketched the rest of the line, you, you probably got a close answer, but not the exact one. So let me let me go ahead and um, do these. So I'm going to, I'll do this one in blue. So we start at six. We rise three and run one. Now, you notice I go off my graph there, right? I'll show you guys a neat way to handle that. My slope is three or one. I usually would go up three and over one, but I'm running out of space. So I can go backwards instead. And if you go backwards, you do the opposite. Down, Down and left. Same line, just a different point. Down three, left one. Now, some of you guys probably just added your own numbers, and that's fine, too. All right, but I remember I said... A bunch of points. Don't just do two. Get a bunch. So down three over one, down three over one, down three over one, down three over one. Because the more points you have, the more straight your line will be, the more straight your line will be, the more accurate your outcome will be. So let's do this one. Negative two is my y-intercept. My slope is up one over three. So up one over three, up one over three, and we can go backwards. Down one over three. And there's the cross. And as Edwin said, that point is negative 3, negative 3. Okay? So that's solving systems of equations by graphing. All right. Um, here's the steps. Now, I'm going to ask you guys to read the steps to me. So when I do that, find this slide. Okay? It's on your notes. Do you guys see it? Sometimes I'll be like, hey, can you read step two? And they're like, just got to read it. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to show you the substitution method. There's a lot of steps involved. There's a lot of math going on here. So that's why I gave you the steps. Um, let's go ahead and see what, what we got. So laundry's not on this today, but I will go to Brianna. What does step one say? Find the lonely letter. 
By that, I mean something that says x equals or y equals. Do you guys see it? Yeah. Right there. So under you can you can underline it if you want to. That's step one. Matter of fact, I'll even label that as step one. All right, let's do step two. Um, Kimora, what's step two? Circle what it equals. Now, by the way, these first two steps, maybe you don't really need to do them. I just do it for teaching reasons so you can see what we're thinking. The first thing I do is I find that letter and then I identify what it equals and that's how we'll, we'll do it. All right. All right. So step three. Uh, Alonzo, what does step three say? That's right. So now this is this is where thing this is probably the hardest step of the the problem. Okay, so make sure you pay close attention here. Y is equal to this. Do you guys agree? Yeah. That means they're the same. Right. So like if if uh, if if uh, Shimani had a ten dollar bill, and I say, hey, can I have that? I said, she said no. That's probably true. And but then I said, well, what if I give you five? Would that be a fair exchange? Yeah. I can switch those because they're identical, right? They're worth the same amount. Right. Well, this y is worth the same thing as this. They're equal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the y with what it's equal to in this other equation. So take your an arrow here and draw it to the y. I can replace that y with what y is equal to. So let me let me finish the step and then I'll take y'all's question. Um, so. Let's write this equation again. This is step three. I'm going to write this equation again, but instead of a y, what am I going to put there? So tell me what to write. Oh, that's probably what you guys are raising your hands about, huh? Yeah. So put a plus there, you guys. Hopefully it's a plus. We'll see. Negative 7x plus 3. I hope that's supposed to be a plus, because if it's not, we're going to get fractions and fractions. So. All right, so anyway, that's what you guys were going to bring to my attention? Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, so that, that's the hardest step of this whole thing. So step one, find your x equals or y equals. Step two, circle what it equals. Step three, this is the hard one. Replace that letter in the other equation with what it's equal to. This is why they call it the substitution method, because you're replacing one thing with something else. You're substituting it. From here... We're going to rely on our algebra skills. So here, I'm just going to let you guys shout out the steps to me. What What's the step one here? Um, seven times oh, solve. So, yeah. Oh, you're right. So the step is solve. And so at this point, we're going to, yeah, so distribute. That's the word I'm looking for. We're going to distribute this too. Okay. What's the next step? Um, combine like terms. Combine like terms. Do you guys see like terms there? Yeah. Which one? Uh, five and negative fourteen. So go ahead and combine those. See what you guys get. When you got it, just shout it out. Combine them. What did you say? Negative nine. Okay, I'm out of space, so I'm going to continue over here. I've got negative 9x plus 6 equals negative 3. All right, what's the next step? Um, subtract the 6 from the negative 3. Subtract the 6 from the negative 3. So go ahead and do that. What do we get? Negative 9. Negative 9x equals negative 9. 19. Oh, yeah. And now we divide. And what is x equal? One. Okay. I'm not done. Why not? Because we still have another step. That's true, because it's on the paper, there's another step. And we, yeah. So the thing is, we need to find y. Remember, a system of equations has two letters. We need to find both. I only found one. So that's the last step. So would you, would you read that to me, Denise? What's the last step say? Uh, plug your answer into the, okay. <laughs> plug your answer into find the other one. That's right. So I'm going to plug my answer in, which is 1. Now, I'm going to plug that into one of these equations. Now, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, but I like the one that has the x equals or the y equals on it, so I'm going to go with that. So now I have two letters in here, 
which letter am I going to replace? The X. I'm going to replace the X. Why? Because I know what X equals. What does X equal? One. One. So I'm going to replace the X with one. I'm sorry, I'm going a little bit quick here, but y equals negative 4, and I'm done. So this is the substitution method. This is another way to solve a system of equations. We've, we've learned one, it's graphing. Now graphing does isn't always the best, just so you know. It's a strategy. I like it. It develops some ideas, but it's not a great strategy. One, if your lines aren't perfect, you're going to miss the point. Second problem, sometimes they intersect in weird places, like in fractions. You can't tell what the number is at that point. Third, sometimes there's, they're intersecting so far off, like out in the 20s or 30s, that you can't see where they're crossing. So graphing has a lot of limits. This avoids all of that. So substitution is another way to solve a system, and it's those five steps. Yes? Is it like how would you write it on this? Great question. So how would you write it? You can write it like this if you want to. A point. Yeah. And if you're going to write it as a point, you got to make sure the order is correct. So which one comes first? X. Okay. Yeah. So you could write your answer in either way. Okay? Either way. But there, there's our solution. That's called the substitution method for solving a system of equations. Okay? Um, how are we doing on time? What time is it? For, you guys... You, and we get out here at 42. Okay, I think we got time for a guided practice. Guided practice means like, I'm not going to let you do a whole problem on your own yet, but like, I'm going to let you do each step on your own and we'll check as we go, okay? So let's, let's do a guided practice. All right, so. Um, do step one. And do step two also. I think we could do those two steps pretty quick. So do step one and two. And then I'll ask. Step three is the hard one. Ask the one where people struggle. So step one and two, let's see each other. Okay. Armani, you got step one and two? Yeah. All right. So what, what do I do first, Armani? Uh, you underline the X. The X equals, right? He found his lonely letter. And then what's next? The circle is the three line. Okay. Great. All right. Step three is the hard one. So this is step one and two. I want you guys to do step three. If you can do step three, you're almost home. The rest of it's not too bad. If you remember how to solve equations, solving equations. So take a minute to do step three. I would even encourage you to check your answer with a neighbor on that one. It's a little different than what I did. A little different. You got to think about it. Remember, you're, you're substituting. You're replacing something with what it's equal to. So, so if you want to check your answer with the neighbor, I'll give you like another 30 seconds. I'm going to call them. So I'm going to figure out what they wrote. You're going to, you're going to tell me an equation that you wrote. I made this a week ago. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask Cal, what did you write, Cal? Okay, you nailed it, Cal. Nice job. So that's the hard step, in my opinion. So you have to know what it is that you're plugging in and where you're plugging it in to, and that's where it gets messy. So I know that x equals 3y plus 2. That means I can replace x with 3y plus 2. Notice this time I'm replacing x. On the last problem I replaced y, that's because we had a y equals. This time we have an x equals. Okay, so there's that. And now we're going to solve it. 
Let's see how you guys do with solving it. Step four. There's there's a lot of steps in solving it, so I'll give you some time. But see what you guys get. Something weird happened. Yeah. Okay, so Denise saw that too. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll do it together then. I I let's, let's do I it. I mean, together. it wasn't weird. It was just different. Let Let me call. It is different. So they're they're they've done it and they're seeing something weird happen. So let, let's do it together and let's see. So Jedrick, what what's the first step in solving here? Distribute. Okay. I'm not seeing anything weird yet, but what we'll see. Vidal, what what would I do next? Right? So that's going to be negative 23y if I put these two together, right? Am I doing anything wrong? Okay. I thought something else was going to happen. But I think I know what you guys are seeing. Um, all right. So next step. Kimaya, I want to, this is a negative 14 and I want to get rid of it. How do you get, what do I do to get rid of it? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do the opposite of subtraction, which is. Mm -hmm. I hate it when the teacher calls on you. Everything freezes up. All right. So we got negative 23y equals what? Zero. Okay. Uh, Dave, what's next? Dave, sorry. No, no, I see why though, because there's a negative there. Um, you would do plus 23 if, if it was like this. Negative 23 plus y, then yes, you would add it on both sides. Yeah, since it's right next to it, it means we're multiplying a negative 23. So we're going to divide by negative 23. So the answer is zero. So is that what you guys are seeing is weird? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, zero is a number two. Zero is a number two. He's a number two. We don't want to discriminate against zero. He counts, he counts. It's like Pluto. It's like not a planet anymore. Why not? It's out there. It's floating around. It's a big rock like everything else. Discrimination. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right. That's step four. So we did step one. Lonely letter. Step two. Circle what it equals. Step three. Plug it in. Step four. Solve. We're on step five. So go ahead and do step five for me. And then I'll call on you to share out what you wrote at the beginning of that. So Stephen, what's what's what do I do now? So what did you write to begin with? Oh, I wrote for x equals three, and then I plugged in the y that we got, which is it. Uh huh. That's, that's step five. So take your answer and plug it into one. Now you should be able to plug it into either one. It doesn't matter. But I like the one that x equals or y equals. Yeah, it's that easier. Yeah, it's that's right. Yeah, this one will be less work than that one. But they should both give the same answer because this point should be on both lines. All right, so 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 2 is 2. So there's x, there's y. And so you can write your answer just like that, or you can write it as a point. This is where the, those two lines would cross if we were to graph them. Okay, so that's called the substitution method. So that was a guided practice. That means I, we do it together, but one step at a time, I let you do it. Now I'm going to give you student practice. You're just going to do the whole thing from beginning to end, okay? So let's see how y'all do with that guy. And I think that does it after that. So keep it out, though, so you can make sure you got your right answer when you're done. But you can start uploading your notes once you're done.
if you can, leave your stuff out so you can check your answer if you're done, but you can start uploading your notes. I'm having um, Leah put it up for you guys, but if you want to check your work, I know she's got it right, so. Now we're 
Seven X on the other side. So you have seven X. You're right. Um, you know what? Um, I'll fix it. We we had a negative here. That's not. So that's going to change. <laughs> so, right now the seven is right next to it. That means they're doing one side. Now, what's the opposite? So, that's why we subtract the very few to be the opposite of the other. But over here, I want to be the opposite. So that's the end of the three. So that's the end of step four. Now to do step five, um, I'll let you look up there. She's got it later. But basically what she did is she took the end of the three and she plugged it in for X. And she solved it. So that's all she did. I like your perseverance, staying there after class. You know, yeah, that's awesome. That's how we get it. Persevere. Michael, um, let me do this thing. But if you have a question, I can see you. Okay, you have second lunch, right? Okay. 